What is my personality? A plus. You, you, That's you, an A plus. Yeah, your personality is correct. Like, because that. Cause your personality <laughs> is correct. Well oh, done. It's not defective. God. You can keep it. Uh, it doesn't need to go into the store for oh. repair. Who are you and why? Uh, yes, very well. Thank you for asking. I am Monica, and because I can be, somebody has to be, so it can only be me. That's a good answer. We're happy with that. Ah, one deep. What? What do you talk about? What? What is your plan for IO? To to to. to what sounds are you gonna make on stage here? Mouth sounds. Mouth sounds. Yes. That's good because I tried a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Did not you go well. Would. <laughs> not a popular session, I've heard. You would. Uh, I am making mouth sounds about the PW starter kit. So my team has been building this awesome uh, bunch of templates that you can use and you can pick them up and you can build a PWA. And we try to do most of the heavy lifting for you so that you don't have to. So, so this is, is this a kind of similar tool to like uh, or Yeoman or like Preaxialize? Is that sort of similar yeah, to this sort of thing? Yeah, that was yeah. buzzwordy. So, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. so we looked at a whole bunch of CLIs and we saw what they were doing and uh, we and tried to... And you it wrong. Well, a lot of them deal with starting up with a framework, mm -hmm. whereas like starting up with a PWA is a little bit different because what you're trying to do is make like a fairly framework agnostic, uh, sort of like work with everything yeah. uh, PWA. So ours tries to use things off the shelf. So we have Redux for state management. We didn't like invent our own. Uh, we're using okay. lit element and lit HTML for like so the rendering. I that I've heard like a framework. Yeah, that's beside like two K. You find me a framework that's two K. It's not a framework. So I've heard this Redux thing. Yeah. Redux. Redux? Redux. Redux. Redux? I've heard that word a lot. Yeah. I still don't know what it is. I always said like it's like Flux Redux and React Redux, like but it's always in there. But I don't know what it is. It's a uh, tiny state container. It's like a very glorified key value store. Um, and it has a whole bunch of patterns, what you can do and can't do with your data. The okay. whole point being like there's one source of truth. Only the store has access to your data, and so everybody else. So that's the thing else. where you like connect your elements yeah, to, it, and so they get updates when yeah, something changes. Yeah. Okay. An element can okay. like care about data getting updated, or like want to wants to communicate that data needs to be updated, but can never like just poke at the data. But I, I thought gross. it was a React thing, right? Redux is a. Yeah. No, Redux is a framework agnostic, view independent. Think of a oh, you've, you've Thank practiced you. this. You've Thank practiced you. this. I do. I have a slide. I have it in the the palace of my mind. Oh, okay, so yeah, so you can work with any framework as yeah, a, a data which is why it's really good. popular, because you can just jam it into anything. And a whole bunch of frameworks have like little adapters so that it makes it easier inside of their framework, but you can just use vanilla Redux with no problems. Okay. You, you sort of, you threw down like lit element. I like, did. Like that's a thing. <laughs> what, what you is? haven't heard of it, Jay? God. It's so already like two days old. Yeah, so LitHTML is a tiny little library that Justin wrote last year, and it basically lets you render templates uh, in HTML templates in JavaScript, and it's super fast because it's super optimal about how it re-renders them and stuff like that. In lit it's element, like the, the, the little value bindings. Yeah, yeah, thingy, yeah. Right? Yeah. And lit element does the same thing, where we took lit HTML and took all of that rendering logic and put it in a custom element base class. So okay. it has, uh, you know, things that you're familiar with. It has like a render method, so that that gets called when your properties get updated and. Whatever you put in your render me method is basically magic because it's JavaScript. You can, you know, go to town if you want to. Okay. And other like tiny little helpers, like lifecycle helpers that you might need. I mean, that seems like element. what I know from Paul is like always like like individual tiny little helpers yeah. that use everything, buy everything all at once. It seems like yeah. something that you team And now we can well. like get rid of a lot of what like Polymer One used to have because four browsers almost have custom elements. So yeah, what is the status in terms of that? Because okay, I, I just okay. like to say, you know, my project, Service Worker, has just shipped in all browsers. So uh, where, oh, where, where, where are we with your project? How's that 11 doing? Oh uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> I11 <laughs> I okay. doesn't have it. So we have Chrome, okay. we have Safari. Good. We have custom elements in Firefox behind a flag, and I've heard Shadow DOM is very close. Oh, okay. Rumors. And that is the end. Good ones. Uh, I mean, and like probably Opera and Oh, because yeah, yeah. yeah, all the Chrome. Yeah, all the Chrome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do not have Edge. We have interest from Edge, but not implementation from Edge. What's the state of polyfills then? If people wanted to use this stuff today, they exist. Good. Um, they have existed for a long time. Right? Yeah. So polyfills have existed for a long time. We've been up. We've updated the polyfills to work with modules. Now that HTML imports are kind of on the dying end, so yeah. we've switched to using modules for everything. And the polyfills also work with modules and don't try to import HTML imports and stuff like that. So with, with the HTML imports, that would in, that would have your um, like your styles in there, and then sort of the definitions for your custom elements. Um, yeah. How does that look in a module world? 
So in a module world, all of that looks together, but in a giant, uh, you know, template JavaScript literal. Oh. This is what a template literal looks like. Um, I mean, yeah, with, with lit HTML, it makes sense because you already yeah. have your markup in yeah. an HTML template tag string literal. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so you can just add some styles. You yeah. Know? Put the yeah. markup in there. So we've updated Shady DOM to work with that. So you can like you can have a module module that exports uh, a style node with all its goodness and like import it as a squiggle inside of your render function. I think that's actually a proper keyword. It's a squiggle. 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 What do you call the squiggles? Curly braces? Yeah, squiggles. Yeah, squiggles. Imported with a squiggle. I yeah. like that. It's like import it with a squiggle. That's your new tagline for Polymer. Thank you. Oh yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. So like we, I've been doing some work with web components recently, and my uh, my feeling is like the, the the polyfill for like straight up custom elements yeah. is super light and small and great, and everything's yeah. happy. And but my feeling is like with the shadow DOM polyfill. Yeah, it turns out reinventing the DOM in JavaScript is kind of really hard. Yeah. Who, who saw that coming? It's not an easy problem. Yeah, it's not an easy problem, and the problem is is not really the DOM; it's the CSS parser it's a and telling. Thing, right? Telling CSS that it needs to update and run some styles when things yeah. update, so that's what makes it hard. So if you're using if you're using all of them together, it's very easy because you get a callback when all of them have rendered, and then. Um, but mostly you have to like take a template and be like, hey, shady DOM and CSS, here's the template. Do your thing so that you you imbibe it with magic so that it works later. If we're building stuff now, uh, you know, with the hope of it sort of being there in the future where all browsers are supporting these web components things. Should people be sort of avoiding Shadow DOM for now? Or? No, no? I like we, should, it. we should go all in on Shadow DOM. Shadow and DOM stuff's is not gonna very break. good if you need Shadow DOM. Shadow DOM gives you encapsulation. Now, that's if you're... the worst tagline I've seen. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shadow DOM hides you in a corner is probably the worst tagline. <laughs> I, I like, I like it. If it you know, Shadow DOM, it's there if you need it. That's yeah. a very wholesome tagline. So think about tagline. it. If you're, if you're like a reusable component library, you're Vaadin or like Ionic, and you're making a button, or you're a design system instead of a big company, you're making a button. That button has to always be that kind of shade of blue. Mm -hmm. You want Shadow DOM for that. You don't want anybody like poke and prod in it and be like, your shade, your shade of blue is slightly incorrect. I'll just add my 14th shade of blue to this application, right? You want Shadow DOM for that. But if you're building like the top view of, a, of an application, Maybe you want something like a, a jQuery plugin to work in there. Maybe that's not going to work with Shadow DOM. Maybe that's a thing that you don't want encapsulation for. So they, I, I tried to build a, a web component of like doing syntax highlighting. Yeah. So just an element, put your code in, yeah. it syntax highlights it. And it felt like Shadow DOM was a good choice there because it's going to hide all of those extra elements that I needed to do that syntax highlighting. Yeah. But I was worried about like, oh, the amount of like, extra polyfill I'm going to need to do that. But also, how do I get Use a styling in there if they wanted to change oh, this. Oh man, do I have exciting news for you? Dun, dun, dun. Ready? I'm not, no, I'm not ready. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. There is a new spec. I'm very excited about it. It's called Part and Theme, and it basically works how Part and Theme. Part and Theme. Okay. They come together as a couple. Well, actually, they come as cousins. As a couple? No. Oh gosh, <laughs> this is, no, this is sounding really bad already. So, so, so they're a couple. You they're said cousins. This. No. And, and this is no. something we all want. No. What is? I think we shouldn't You're shame a them. Monster. <laughs> um, no. So part is basically when you're building a custom element, it lets you like specify little divs that you might, or like little elements that a user might want to style, and you put a part on them and you give them a name. Say if you're an input element, you would call them a WebKit placeholder or WebKit spinner up and WebKit spinner down. Oh. Those are basically the parts that input exposes for styling. Okay. So then you could do this too as a custom element, and you'd be like, these are the bits that you can style, and then you can like use them. They're like you can use like pseudo selector and hovers and shit like that on them, and they work. So the fun fact is that we invited you to the CSS working group because of these two new things. Yes. And then we didn't talk about them. Correct. But then I learned how layouting works, so it's fine. You're also a member of the emoji committee, I and am. that's something where we actually Sub know what's going on. Subcommittee, thank you, emoji uh, subcommittee. Sorry. Uh, yeah. As uh, so, how is there no shark emoji, but there is a dinosaur emoji? Do you know how much people have whined for the dinosaur emoji? Do you know why people asked for the dinosaur emoji? No, I don't. But it's not a real animal. I mean, it's a real. It doesn't exist anymore. While a shark. There's floppy disks, and they don't exist anymore. Ah, that's art. Oh. So um, emoji get accepted based on. Uh, how many people? Not, it's not necessarily how many people request them, but how popular that concept is. Okay. And if you search on for dinosaur on Google, you will find a bunch of results because a lot of people talk about dinosaurs. And when you're like trying to text somebody, you would like a representation of a dinosaur. I agree that sharks should also be there. 
maybe nobody proposed it. Is, is that what we're saying? Is that dinosaurs are more popular than sharks? Is, I would. I, I can get behind that statement. This honestly. feels a lot like Shark Week, and I am uncomfortable with the statement. Oh. On behalf of all sharks out there, maybe nobody proposed a shark. We don't propose emoji. People propose emoji. We just review them. So if, uh, can we get like a? It needs to be to a free emoji. That, what's the process? How do we start that? And what, and what characters would you have to combine? <laughs> <laughs> so first, we need to get the Surma and Jake emoji. And with the zero with join, we would Oh get... my god, okay. you guys, there is this emoji. This emoji exists. It's is like it, the two bunny the... boys. Oh. They're, they're like the two bunny girls, and now there's the two bunny boys. Oh, so I, well, I thought for me, it would have to be the, the boy emoji, and then the white color, and then the white color. And then the white color, and the white color again, and then Shock it'll be like, that's Jake. Shockingly, yeah, that's your it. shade of white is not on the Fitzpatrick scale quite yet. We need to invent a new color space, yeah. I think, for yeah. the, is what, whatever's after HDR. The reflective, can maybe, reflective yeah, color we, space. We, we, we've had to do all sorts of gymnastics we, we, yeah. with covers to, to stop me, me just kind of exploding the cameras. Yeah, they paid no attention to Surma and I, and they're like set up lighting for you for 45 yeah, minutes. I know. At least otherwise, oh. he's just a reflector. I become lighter because the sun reflects off his face. Yeah, <laughs> I burned some like light bulbs in my kitchen if you want to just come hang out there and. <laughs> We're going to link to your talk in the, in the show notes, yes. uh, which you haven't given yet, but we're... It's going to be great. How, how will your audience have reacted by the point you've given the talk? Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Best talk ever. No talking comes second to it.